when life hits you, when there is emergencies that come in your life, and the Bible is full of things that have happened to people, to God's men and God's uh, people, when emergency situations come, what do I do? When I'm under attack, what do I do? When I'm facing adversities, what do I do? Amen. When life, just life, hits you. So we've been talking about, amen, what do I do when these things happen? Glory to God. So this teaching is to get you in a place of faith where you overcome, you recover, amen, anything that you lost over the last several years, amen, that you overcome the difficulties you are faced with. Are you hearing me today? That's why we've been given faith. That's why God gives us faith. It pleases God. The Bible says that we are, that we prosper. That means that we overcome and succeed. That we, amen, be successful. Uh, look at somebody and say, uh-huh, uh-huh, mm-hmm. It pleases God for you to get through whatever you're going through. Mm -hmm. I, 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 are, you, are you listening? I said it pleases God, hallelujah, for you to overcome whatever obstacles are in your way. Amen. You do that by your faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see many under, under pressure. It's one thing to understand the process of faith. Amen. But under pressure to keep your confidence up. Amen. Hear me well. When you're going through something and life is hitting you, the thing is, Amen. To keep your confidence up. Oh, hear me well. Are you listening? Look at somebody and say, I got to keep my confidence up. So it's one thing to understand the process of faith, but under pressure to keep your confidence up. Amen. That your faith is working. Amen. That your faith is working where? when you're going through challenges, when you're going through challenges. So where there's delay and when you have to stand more than 24 hours, mm, when you get bad news on top of bad news, oh, hear me, uh-huh. It, 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 it can be like our faith is diminishing mm -hmm. and diffused. But that's the time when you have to hold fast to your confession of faith. Ooh, listen to me good. Listen to me. Listen to me this morning. See, I'm talking about in these difficult times. I'm talking about in times that you're facing stuff. You're facing, things are hitting you, and you've already, you know, it, it, it's been more than just 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, 24 hours done passed, and you're still there. The stuff is still facing you. The things are still hitting at you. And on top of that, you done heard more bad news. Ooh. And instead of getting better, it looks like it has gotten worse. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, I want you to hear me that that's the time when you have to hold fast. 
you have to hold fast to your confession of faith. So I've been teaching on, on my confidence and my faith working under pressure, under pressure. It may not look like it, but, but, but you have enough confidence and it's working, it's working. It may not, you may not feel like it. Okay, I'm gonna hold fast to my confidence. I'm gonna hold fast to it. I'm not gonna let it go. And it may look like it's not working. I said it may not look like it's doing anything. You may feel like, dear God, this ain't happening for me. Because you have to continue to release faith with the words of your mouth. Oh, what did I say? How do you release faith? You release faith by what you say. That's why I said this morning, let the weak say something. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. But that's why I see people really bail out. That's the time that I, many times that I've seen people bail out, bail out of faith. In other words, when it does look, when it doesn't look like it's going to happen, I want you to hear me now. When it doesn't look like it's going to happen, then that's when many times they withdraw mm -hmm. their confession. They're, they're not uh, um, longer, no longer speaking or boldly declaring. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's when the devil, that's exactly what the devil wants. Isn't it interesting that the devil knows the power of your mouth? But you don't. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting that the devil knows? It's just like um, Rick said this morning that the devil wanted, you know, and we knew that the devil wanted to shut him up. Because he knew if this man starts talking, if this man starts believing, if this man starts declaring, I'm in trouble. So he tried to shut him up. How many times have the devil tried to shut you down by confessing and declaring boldly? Do you know he don't want you here? He doesn't want you here. He wants you to give up. He wants you, amen, see. That's what the devil wants. He wants you at the time, the times when you're going to, to give it up. Now, let's look at, let's look um, what real faith is. Faith, the Bible says, is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So now for most people, faith is reasoning on tiptoes. I'm, let me be careful. Walking around like, you know. There's no confidence in it. There's no confidence in it. I want you to hear me well, because I'm going, I, I want you to hear me. So when I, when I just about came, can see how it's going to work out, then they call that faith. Ah. But let me tell you what biblical faith is. Biblical faith is when I can't see how it's going to work out. Oh, tap somebody this morning, tap somebody this morning, tap somebody. Tap your neighbor, tap your neighbor. When I can't see, whoa, how it's going to work out. That 
that's biblical faith. When I don't know, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So when I can't see how this is going to work out, I don't know how it's going to work out. But I have the word of God saying it's going to work out for me. Therefore, I choose. I make a choice to believe. Oh, glory to God. Look at somebody say I'm making some choices right now. I don't know how things are going to work out. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I just really don't know. But I'm making a choice. Woo! To believe God that no weapon formed against me can prosper. I'm making a choice to believe it. I'm making a choice that he said I'm a present help in the time of trouble. I'm making a choice to believe it. I'm making a choice, amen, that he'll never leave me. Ooh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm making a choice. I'm making a choice. I don't know what's going to happen. I can't tell you what's going to happen. But I made a choice to believe God. Tell somebody, I believe God. Who? I choose to believe. I choose to believe. Let's go to Hebrews 10. Ah. Uh, come on, give God a real serious praise this morning. Oh, I'm talking to you this morning. I'm talking to you this morning. I'm talking to those who say, you know what, I'm going through some stuff. I, 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 I'm, going, I'm, on, I'm under some pressure. I'm talking to you this morning. I don't know how I'm going to come out of this. I'm talking to you this morning. It seems like instead of it getting better, it got worse. 24 hours have passed. Uh, I'm talking to you this morning. Ooh, hallelujah. Oh, give him a praise. Give him a praise. I said, give him a praise. Hallelujah. That's who I'm talking to this morning. Hallelujah. So we're going to see all kinds of pressure situations. It was pressure when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. Mm. Still Believe God. Oh, I, 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 let, let's just go there. Just go there. Just go there for a minute. Go with me. Just walk there with me. Walk there with me. Here, here, here Daniel is. They were jealous of him. They were trying to catch him. Catch him, you know, because Daniel refused to stop praying. Daniel had favor with the king. Oh, they were jealous of this man. And they plotted. An evil plot to catch him. And when they did, Daniel ended up being thrown in the lion's den. Oh, look at somebody. Say, now wait a minute. Lions? Hungry lions. Lions that haven't been fed. Oh, you know when you've been somebody trying to eat your life up. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? When somebody's trying to eat your life, or when, some try to, when somebody's trying to, amen, stop you, are you hearing when the enemy's trying to, you know, just take you down under pressure? But Daniel made a choice. Now, you, 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 let's look at this for real. You going in. Hungry lions. Didn't look like this thing was going to be stopped because they got the king to make a decree. And once the king says it, 
He can't take it back. Oh, Lord God. Daniel could, Daniel, Daniel could have said, I'm, I'm, I'm dead. Well, I'm going to die now. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Did you hear what? Daniel could have said, it's over. I want you to see the pressure here. I want you to see the situation here. It's over. But the Bible said that Daniel believed God. Oh, are, are, are you hearing me? This man is in a, look at somebody say, a situation. Still believing God. I could tell you about Jehoshaphat. Pressure when Jehoshaphat was surrounded with enemies and he had no way out. Look at somebody and say, no way. Oh, say it again. Oh, say it again. He had no way out. If God don't help us, he said, we're going to die. What did he say? If God don't help us, we're going to die. I want you to hear me this morning. You want to hear some more situations? Pressure. When the Hebrew boys were thrown into the fiery furnace, that's pressure. You can do all of this confession if you want to, but when you start smelling the fire, And feeling the heat. That's pressure. Mm -hmm. These boys. <laughs> These boys. Was under some serious pressure. Because here they are. Here they are. Look at somebody say here they are. Here they are. Look at somebody say a situation. Oh, tell them again, a situation. <laughs> Hear me. This is not fairy tale. This is true. This is, this is true. See, and that's why I want you to go there because somebody said, well, nobody understands my situation. Nobody knows what I'm going through. That's why it's in the word of God so that you can see who the most high is. Oh, so you can see. Amen. He has the final say. He has the final authority. But the people that know their God shall prove their God to be strong and they shall do exploits in his name. Tell somebody God is about to show you all. You got to hear what it say. You got to get the religion out and hear the instruction. Because he's telling us all the time. He's telling us and he's telling us and he's telling us and he's telling us and he's telling us all the time. But see, if you make religion out of it instead of hearing the instruction, how could they believe God? Because they knew him for the people that know their God. 
shall prove their God to be strong. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. For the people that know, know, know their God. Huh? See, you ought to be able to look back on your life and say, I didn't know how I was going to get out of that, but he got me out. <laughs> I know how I was going to do this. I didn't know how I was going to get my meal. I didn't know how I was going to pay my bills. I didn't know how I was going to get up out of that sick bed. I didn't know how I was going to come out of that mess. But I knew my God. I got to take my time. You got to understand this. See, you have to understand that God's working now while you even sit here. Because when you understand, amen, that there's a presence and there's a power and that there are angels in this room. So you got, see, th that's why I said there is another realm. That's why Elijah said. His servant looked at him and he said, look of all, look, look all, look at that army that's against us. Look at the army that's against us. And Elijah sitting there at peace and not worrying about a thing. Look at somebody say, you wearing why? For the people that know. <laughs> Elijah said, when he touched him, he said, open up his eyes that he might see there are more of us than it is them. There was another invisible realm. See, there's a realm that you don't see that's going to help you out. <laughs> here they are, and the king, and here they said, turn the heat up. See, that's when, when it's going past 24 hours. That's mean when you that when you've heard something else now on top of what you already going through. Yeah. 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 That enemy done turned it up ten times harder. He done turned it up. He done turned it up now. So how what you gonna do now? But the Bible said it threw him in. Oh. And the king. I got to, I, I got to, I got I can't stay down there with y'all. Because y'all will make me preach. You, you got to, I can't preach right now. I want you to hear me. Look at somebody and say, <laughs> I know y'all. <laughs> Woo, good God. See, it's a difference when you start smelling the fire. Are you hearing me? And feeling the heat. That's pressure. Amen. Yeah, you're yelling out your confession. But he, they made a confession. Say, King, we don't care what you say. We're not going to bow. Oh. That's pressure. Do you hear me? No matter what you say. And the king ended up when they went there. The king said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We threw in three. I see a fourth man. And he looks. 
like the Son of God. Oh, all because they refuse to bow. And out of their mouth, we believe God. You, 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 you want to hear some more situations? When the widow been believing God and all she got is one last meal. What did I say? No, I said, I said, I said, when the widow had been believing God, and she is, she's got this one last meal. And the prophet says, you give that to me. Uh-oh. And then you and your boys trust God. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, pressure. Oh, look at him one more time. Pressure. So I want you to, I want you to hear me. Pressure. You give that meal to me. You trust God. Pressure, pressure. But some of you that looks strange for you to pay even your tithes is pressure. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Pay my tithe. Look at somebody say pressure. Me? For something you write the check. Pressure. See, you have to have confidence in this. And here's the key. Here's the key. The key is not in you knowing the process. And we talked about process in this situation. The key is in you knowing your partner. Did you hear what I said? That's the key. The key is in you knowing your partner. Oh, glory to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The key is not in you understanding, you know, you got to understand all the faith process. No, that's not it. Amen. It's in me understanding that I have an unfailing faith partner. He cannot fail. He does not lie. He watches over his word to perform it. Oh. In your life. Oh, Lord. Okay. All right. I got to know my partner. Amen. God is in this with you. I said, God is in this with you. Who got a situation? Who got a situation? Raise your hand. Who got a situation? Uh-huh. Now look at the person. Look around and just look around. Keep your hands up. Uh-huh. Talk to him this morning. God is in this with you. You are not alone. Oh, glory to God. So I'm just kind of recapping a little bit. See, because I've been on this a little bit. So I'm recapping. Just kind of recapping a little bit. 
bring you up to date again. You're not alone. See, what you have to understand, that's the essence of it. Amen. So when you start looking at it by yourself, <laughs> for what you know to do, uh-huh, you hear me? What you have then is you can't, you can't, you can't make it. When you start looking at just you, yourself, what you can do. Because if you could have, you would have done it already. If you could have changed it, you would have already done that. Are you hearing me? Look at somebody say, yeah, 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 mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Are you hearing me? You would have done that. You've already done that. And that's what the devil wants you to do. Look at your sickness. Look at your situation. Look at what's happening. Look at it as though it's all on you. I had to come back up here because I, 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 I uh, mm -mm. I'm trying not to preach right now. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to look at your situation as if it's all on you. And if you could have, you would have fixed it already. Are you listening? And when you do that, you always, you will always come up short. Let, let, let's be, before we get to Hebrews, let, let's turn to, um, let's, let's go to Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs. Uh-huh, Proverbs 4. It's going to give us some instruction again. Amen. Proverbs 4 and 20. Mm-hmm. My son, attend to my words. Wait a minute, what? Attend to my words. Say it again. Attend to my words. One more time. Attend to my words. You hear? Now he's giving you instructions of what to do. He said, now attend to my words. Go ahead. Consent and submit to my sayings. Uh-huh. Did you hear what I said? What I told you when I told you that I wouldn't leave you. Consent to that. Submit to that. When I said that I would never forsake you, uh-huh, take that in. Uh-huh. When I said that I'm a very present help in time of trouble, consent to that. Submit to that. Believe that. You hear the instruction? And then he goes on and says, uh-huh. Let them not depart from Wait. your sight. Don't let what I told you to depart from your sight. Hallelujah. Glory. Because the pressure will, the pressure tries to come and it gets you to look off. Try to, mm, mm, let me, let me, uh huh. Come on, represent, uh huh, represent the pressure, represent the situation. And, 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 and right there, mm hmm. And so he said, he said, don't look away from what I said. Ooh, but the trouble is moving all around. Just move around, need you to move around, uh huh, uh huh. Come on. All right, just go with him. Now, now, double trouble. Mm -hmm. It's just moving all around, trying to move towards you, trying to move towards you, trying to move to. And so now, now it's off of the word, and now it's on to this. You're looking at the trouble. You all involved in the trouble. You all trying to fix the trouble. You all thinking about the trouble. But you didn't. But you looked away. You looked away from the word. He said his instructions were, don't, don't let what I told you to depart. From your sight. Keep it on the word. Keep it on what I said. Keep it on what I said. Keep it on what I told you. You got to hear the instruction. You got to hear what he's saying. When you start talking, 
and as powerful as your mouth is, you start getting in agreement with this. It just seems like it's just getting worse. It just seems like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. I don't know. And this gets bigger than this, the word. David said, oh, let us magnify. Come, come, let us magnify the Lord. Come and magnify the Lord. Come on, magnify means I'm taking his word and I'm making it bigger than this. You got to hear. You got to hear the instructions. Because it's designed. That's why he said, the reason why he said keep my word before you, because guess what? That thing can pull you out. Come on, church. Amen. That thing, you can feel the heat. Mm -hmm. You can feel it. You can feel the heat. Ooh. But he's saying something. Get out of the religious thinking and follow the instruction. Know who your partner is. Your partner is telling you what to do. Why do you have a partner if you're not going to listen? Yes. Amen. Why do you call him your partner? You don't have just anybody as your partner. You have the most high. Mm. Woo. Come on, give him a praise. Come on, give him a praise. Come on, come on, come on. He's helping you. He's helping you. He's helping you. Even now. Hallelujah. He said, don't let it depart. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, finish it. Do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. They're what? They are life to those who find them. They're what? They are life to those who find uh -huh, them. Uh-huh, it's going to life for you. It's good. He said, my words are going to strengthen you. My words are going to be alive to you. My, my words are going to give you the strength and the energy and the power that you need. They are life. Glory to God. To those that find them because everybody doesn't find it. Are you hearing me? Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. Come on, give him another praise, another praise. Hallelujah. Let me say this. Many times people have denied the God factor and he is the most high God, which means he has the last words. Look at somebody this morning and say, God has the last words. No banker, no banker doesn't have the last word. No doctor doesn't have the last words. No supervisor doesn't have the last word. He has the last word, God. <laughs> he is your partner and he is the most high God. Now, if you can hold on to that in the midst of not knowing, you still know, amen. In other words, my faith is working on this. And every delay, it may not have worked out the way I wanted it to work. But every delay is in my faith. All right, all right, okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, oh, so many things didn't work out the way that I thought that they was going to work out. Didn't happen when I wanted it to happen, but every delay is in my favor.
Why is that apostle? Why? Because my faith is working on it. Let's go back to Hebrews 10. Oh, glory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's go to Hebrews 10. Hallelujah. 35. See, somebody, so somebody think this is just a book that you know you just kind of, oh, well, read the Bible. And, you know, that's it. Oh, this is life. Uh-huh. It's working out for my faith. But tell somebody it's working out. It's working out. Because I have my faith working on it. Uh-huh. 35 and 36. Go ahead. Do not, therefore, fling away your fearless confidence. Don't what? Do not fling away your fearless confidence. Tell them, Sean. Tell them. <laughs> Uh-huh. Go ahead. Read it again, girl. Do not, therefore, fling away your fearless confidence. Oh, confidence. Oh, oh, oh. You in a situation. The most high said. Woo. For it carries a great and glorious compensation of reward. Oh, oh, go ahead. Uh -huh. For you have need of steadfast patience. Uh, uh, you need. The most I said. Come on. You need. You need. Don't, 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 don't fling away your confidence in your situation. That's right. Uh -uh. Said so now you need steadfast patience. Let patience have its work. Uh huh. Tell somebody I need, I, I, I gotta, I gotta let patience, gotta, gotta have my, because patience, listen, 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 patience is a spiritual force. Patience is one of the fruits of the spirit. <laughs> Say, I know what happened, I know what happened, I start losing my patience. And when I start losing my patience, I start talking crazy. Yeah. Where's this going to happen? I'm so tired of waiting. I'm just sick of it. I don't know when it's going to happen. I, 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 what, you know how long I've been waiting? That's right. <laughs> oh, but the most high said what? Go ahead. For you have need of steadfast patience steadfast. and endurance. In other words, don't let your patience be here one day and down one day, here one day, down one day, here one day, down one day. Steadfast. steadfast. Be steady with patience. Mm. Said, oh, <laughs> I have an expectation that everything's going to be all right. Now, I'm going to sing it like the old folks say. All right. All right. All right. All right. Everything's going to be all right. Uh-huh. Oh, I got, I got a choir here now. <laughs> That's what they said. Oh, all right. All right. Mm -mm. All right. All right. All right. Everything. <laughs> Woo! You ought to go around singing, it's all right. It's all right. Everything's going to be all right. Woo! Glory be to God. Why? Because my partner is the most high. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. He said, I watch over it. I watch over my word. Now he's telling you. He said, now look, I watch over my word. But I want you to do something. Don't let it depart while I'm watching over it. 
Uh -huh, you hear what I'm saying? While I'm watching over it, don't you let it depart. Because you're watching over his word as well. When the widow woman, when her son died, and she sent for the prophet, <laughs> and the prophet sent his servant while she was coming, he said, go ask her. Go ask her, is everything all right? Can you see the servant? running up to the woman. Now, she came to tell him, amen, about a son. But let me tell you how she answered. Yes, yes, come on. He said, the master wanted to know, is everything all right? <laughs> she said, go back and tell him. Hey. Everything's all right. Glory. She kept the word of God in her mouth. Her son had died. But there was an expectation. You're going to resurrect my son. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And she spoke from out of her mouth. She could have said, oh, no, everything is really bad. My only son, he's gone now. But she didn't say that. She could have said, I don't know. You, 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 you told me I would have a son. She could have said all of that. You told me because he was the one. He said, what can I do for you? He said, well, I see one thing that you don't have no children. So by this time next year, you're going to have a baby. Ooh. See, you got to pay attention when God tells you about this time next year. She said, wait a minute, you prophesied this to me. So I'm going to the one that did, gave the prophecy. Hallelujah. See, see you got to. You have to look at what the what you have to look at what the words say. Y'all keep bringing me down here. I know what you're doing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you 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 have to look at what the word says. Yes. You have to look at what God, your partner, yes. is saying to you. Their faith was so, amen, in God, their partner, that when Shadrach and Meshach stepped in the fiery front, look, the guy that put him in there died. Yes. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> the, the guy, the, uh, big truck, stand up, Rick. You know I always use Rick, yeah. Come, come on up here, Rick. You know, you know. <laughs> you know, not only was you going to put, put somebody in the fire and furnace, but you got this big, you know, this big, strong guy, soldier. Can you imagine somebody? Get, stand up here. Stand, uh huh. Don't hurt him now. <laughs> he rolled up his. <laughs> are, are you hear what I'm saying? You got this big, strong guy. I mean, really? I mean, he's intimidating all by himself. And he's going to throw. He, he's like, he said, turn it up. Turn it up. 
You said, oh, I was already in a situation. Mm. <laughs> the fire by itself going to kill me. Now you're going to make it even hotter for real. But here he is. He grabs him to throw him in the fire, and he gets burned up. <laughs> Don't worry about him, Terrell. He's going to get burned up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look scared. <laughs> Are you see what I'm saying? You hear what I'm telling you? This guy got burned up. Uh -huh. You good though. You say, you say, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you say. <laughs> Do you hear? Do you see what I'm saying? See, that's when it even looks like your situation can look so bad. Your situation can look like, oh my God. But they said. They said. Did you notice that each person said something? Did you notice that each person didn't lose their confidence? Are, are you hearing me? Did you did, did you take note? Amen. The widow woman, she said, mm-mm, everything is well. Everything is all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, you, you have to really, really pay attention to what God is saying. And he said, uh-huh, go ahead. For you have need of steadfast patience and endurance. Oh, Lord. Oh, you have need of steadfast endurance. Grace yes. mm. is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but the one that endures. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Go ahead. So that you may perform and fully accomplish the will of God. Fully accomplish the will of God. Amen. God is saying, I want you to accomplish my will, and my will is for you to win. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My will is for you to win in every area of your life. That's my will. Hallelujah. That you overcome every setback. That you overcome every delay because you got favor. Amen. See, until you start saying this, until you start speaking this, who? Oh, see, I, I, I just was recapping because I'm getting ready to, I got something to tell you. <laughs> but I can't tell you all today. <laughs> Did it again. <laughs> Woo! You hear what I'm saying? You got to do what it says. So I just recapped because I'm getting ready to take you another place. I I'm getting ready to take you another place. But oh, you have to understand, this is not some religious stuff you're doing. Again, I'm, I'm going to say this. This has to be a real conviction of the heart. I know my God. Right. It's got to come from that place. I know in whom I believe. That's right. That's right. That's right. See, it's got to be that kind of stand. He said that no weapon that's formed against you will prosper. But see, you got to believe it. You got to have confidence. That's why we talked about Psalms 91. You say, well, you know what? You know, uh, is it, you, you know, my mother died with this. My father died with this. My sister died with this. Da -da -da -da, they died with this. But the Bible said, mm -mm, but they shall not come nigh me. 
<laughs> a thousand will fall at my side. <laughs> oh, on the other side, 10,000 will fall. But it shall not come nigh me. You got to understand the power of this word. You have to understand who you're in partnership with. Amen. And that's why, again, he says, meditate day and night. Because the stuff and the unbeliefs that had lodged inside of your mind and subconscious mind, only the word can pull it up. So you got to renew your mind. You got to be in relationship with them. Come on, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Woo! Come on, give God a praise. Glory. Are you listening? So, my confidence, it's possible. For the situation and things to work on my confidence. Because if I cannot have confidence towards God, then my faith will not be strong as it used to be. Ooh. Jump down to the, to the 23rd verse. So let us seize and hold fast and retain without wavering the hope we cherish and confess and our acknowledgement of it for he who promised is reliable, sure and faithful to his word. Glory to God. Oh, you need to praise him about now. He's reliable. I said he's reliable. He's reliable and true to his word. Hallelujah. And, you know, again, there's much more to tell you. I got something to tell you. That is life changing. That will revolutionize your life. The gospel is called the good news. Oh. Hallelujah. And when you hear it and receive it, it's absolutely good news because he wants you to win. All the way across the board. All the way across the board. He wants you to win in the affairs of life. That's why it's important to learn in every situation, learn. I encourage you today. Amen. In your marriage, raising your children. Amen. Your job, your career. See, we got we to gotta know. Because we've been conditioned to believe certain things and sometimes the lies the lies the lies that still follow us and we're still acting out of those lies and the devil takes advantage oh he said I know I know I know your past I'll keep bringing them up. 
I keep reminding you of your, your hurt. <laughs> so you can continue to live the lie. So you can continue to look over the truth of who you are. So I keep bringing up your past. Ooh. I keep bringing, reminds you of your hurts. But yet the scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Now I'm going to say this. Just because I got saved doesn't mean that I won't still live out of my old life. My spirit got saved, but my mind did not. My spirit woke up and alive unto God. But he tells me, after salvation, I've got to renew my mind. If I don't renew my mind, I'll keep living out of my past. Oh, I need somebody to hear me. So after salvation, after you come to the altar and receive Jesus into your life, now there's the next step. My spirit woke up. My spirit now is alive unto God. Oh. And now. I've got to do something. Why do I come to church? Isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting that he calls this your home? Your family. <laughs> in the natural, you learn things in your home, whether good or bad. You learn them in your home, in your environment. Now that you're born into the family of God, this is your home. That's why you're coming. You, you're coming to learn from out of your home. And the environment, the praise, the worship, amen, is putting you in a different environment, an environment for you to grow. You didn't grow up in your home. The next day, your mom said, oh, your dad said, oh, okay. Oh, boy, you're a man now. You were born yesterday, but you're a man now. It don't work like that. It doesn't work that way. You have to grow in the things of God. And so you come. You know, people think church is about, you know, just jumping and shouting and, you know, and all of this kind of stuff. You know, yeah, 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 we praise. I got something to praise about. But I'm the, I also understand when I, when I move my feet, who my feet is saying something. When I clap my hands, it causes angels to move. <laughs> oh, because oh, the angels understand the clapping of my hands. Oh, the angels understand, amen, the movement of my feet because my feet is declaring something that I will dance of the Lord through the most high God and things will change in the atmosphere. It ain't about because the music, you know, just feel good. And you boogieing on the floor. I don't know what y'all use now, but you know. The church ain't the jute joint. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Are you hearing me? Nah. Ain't no juke joint. Hallelujah. There's power here. There's power here. And when we clap our hands, we are making a statement. Woo. The movement of our feet is declaring. I will praise the most high. And I will glory in his name. So whatever challenges... Whatever you may be experiencing, whatever situations, whatever when you have to say, emergency, the Most High is working on your behalf. When you start focusing on your limitations, you are going to count yourself out. Religion will always give you a reason why to stay stuck in your mess. I've seen his hands in my situation. I've seen him bring me through. I've seen him bring me out. There's some things in your situation. There are things in your challenges of life. And when life just comes and hits you, you got to know something. See, some of y'all, I had to come into your life because, amen, I had to come. God had it already set up. Woo. Hallelujah. He had it already set up. I had to come into your life. Just because it doesn't look like you are, you have gotten to that place yet. But he's pulling you. I'm coaching you this morning. <laughs> I'm saying, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. To the higher place. Oh, I can see a lot up from here. Just because you were down there once. Doesn't mean, amen, that you don't belong up here. You got to understand what the devil wants. What you got, he wanted. You got to open up your mouth and say, you don't stop dreaming because you don't have the money. Things shall not remain as they have been. There's a change being made. My partner is the most high God. He doesn't fail. Nothing's too hard for him. 